this is Tanya. Welcome back to Black Women Read, reviews of books, zines, and everything in between. Of course, by now, everyone has heard about the passing of Aretha Franklin. And you know, before I pay homage to Miss Aretha, I just want to say, isn't Aretha beautiful in this picture? I can't stop staring at her. While there have been numerous articles, tributes, etc. on Aretha's musical talents, very rarely do people talk about her black woman beauty. Aretha was this gorgeous, brown, full-lipped, thick bone like a rib bone <laughs> black woman. She exuded a natural sexiness that is not really acknowledged. The other day, a television station was playing an old performance of Aretha's. It looked like it was from the early 70s. She had on this cute halter top and these skin-tight pants. Aretha had the audience mesmerized as she sang. Then suddenly, she broke out with a shimmy and dipped down and then shimmied again. I was like, go ahead, Aretha. Aretha knew she was this extremely gifted woman who was also good looking. And that dance was her way of giving herself props on stage. As an avid reader, I also like to write. So, I wanted to write something for Aretha. Now, I'm not a poet, not at all. <laughs> but I just wanted to express my feelings of what Aretha represents to me. So here's a little poem I wrote. Aretha is collard greens, not kale, neck bones, hot water cornbread, lemon cake, pressing combs, burnt ears, baby, I'm sorry. Tango barrettes, Sunday dresses, itchy stockings, eclectic sermons. Amen. Aretha is, please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. Aretha is, this is grown folks business. You ain't heard it from me, but girl... Aretha is, mm, 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 mm. Aretha is Alabama, Mississippi, Memphis, Detroit. Aretha is my, my dear, my big granny, my mama, me. Rest in peace, Aretha. So yes. Let's get some snaps up for Miss Aretha. <laughs> like I said, I'm no poet, but I wanted to honor the queen in some way. But if you want to see how a real master does it, check out Nikki Giovanni's poem for Aretha she wrote back in 2009. I will put the link in the description box. When people talk about their favorite Aretha songs, of course, Natural Woman, R-E-S-P-E-C-T, and daydreaming often come up. However, when I think about Aretha, I think about a class I took years ago as an undergraduate student. The class was on Black American sacred music. My professor, a Black woman, loved her some Aretha. So we spent a good amount of time talking about the musical journey of Aretha Franklin. People tend to skim over Aretha's gospel years but she is adored by people in that genre of music. We listen to early recordings of her singing in the church. It's easy to forget the power of Aretha's voice if we judge her by her later career. She still sounded better than people on the radio. Let's keep it real. But of course, age and decades of singing had taken a toll on her voice. The early recordings of Aretha, her voice is rich and full and crystal clear. She would hold notes on end. Listening to those records, and they literally were records, <laughs> reminded me why she is called the Queen of Soul. We were assigned a really interesting book for the class called Readings in Black American Music by Eileen Southern. Eileen Southern was an African American musicologist, author, and a teacher. Her work is really important 
because she is one of the first people of academia to research the history of Black American music. She passed away in 2002. So, I was looking for this book the other day because I knew I wanted to talk about it. I kept a lot of books from my undergrad years because I just couldn't bear to part with them. <laughs> so I just knew I had that book somewhere in the back of my closet. But when I looked, I was shocked I couldn't find it. I guess somewhere along the way, I got rid of it. And I am really tripping about it. <laughs> but I really wanted to share about the book. So I went to the library and was able to find a copy but it was the original edition of the book because of course, when my class read the book, it had been revised and updated for contemporary readers. The original book was published in the early 70s. While I was disappointed, I wasn't able to get the newer edition of this book. It was still nice to read through and refresh my memory. The original book explores the early history of black music, black singers and instrumentalists, religious music in the 19th century, music on the plantation, etc. There are also several excerpts from books on black musical icons, including Mahalia Jackson. Mahalia Jackson is considered the queen of gospel music. She was also a mentor to Aretha Franklin while she was growing up. I'm going to read a little from her autobiography, Moving On Up, featured in the book. I say this out of my heart. A song must do something for me as well as for the people that hear it. I can't sing a song that doesn't have a message. If it doesn't have the strength, it can't lift you. I just can't sing to get the sense of it. It's been that way ever since I started singing and I guess I was singing almost as soon as I was walking and talking. I always had a big voice, even as a child. And I was raised with music all around me. So yeah, definitely get readings in Black American music to add to your library. Like I said, the revised version is better and expands more on Eileen Southern's research. Wow, it's hard to believe Aretha Franklin is gone. As a 70s, 80s kid, I became familiar with Aretha in the 80s with songs like, Who's zooming who? Take another look, tell me, babe. <laughs> and Free Way of Love, typical quirky 80s songs. But even as a kid, I could tell Aretha was someone amazing. Aretha has been a staple in the music industry for over 60 years. 60 years. I guess it was time for her to rest. Rock steady, Aretha. Rock steady. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you at the next video.